What do you have to do, like not just as an artist, but as a human being to make sure that you never become numb to that or never become desensitized to it, I guess? That is a great question. We don't need Rose. Uh, Mr. Foster, an honor to see you again, sir. How are you? I'm well, Jake. How are you holding? Doing very well. Seriously, thank you for your time. Your performance in this is phenomenal, and the film is incredible. So I really do appreciate your time. Um, you. I'm going to start out with this. This might seem like a strange comparison, but stick with me. I, I've interviewed actors before who've played monsters in horror films, and a lot of them have told me, I keep my distance from the people I have to terrorize because I want them to be afraid of me on film. Uh, you are, to, to a different degree, still sort of playing a monster in this film. And I'm wondering how that impacted your relationship with Will off camera. Is it important to keep a distance or does that sort of thing not matter? I wasn't decided beforehand. Uh, and, and, and I just spoke with Will about it uh, for the first time. Uh, his story goes, uh, I got to set and I'm being Will Smith and I'm producing the film. I have all, all my friends around and, uh, and then you walked on set and just walked right by me. He said, it was like, Oh man, this guy's serious. I, was like, I, I had no recollection of that because I had the exact opposite mm -hmm. experience, which is when I walked on the set and I saw Will, it's like that man's deep in it. I'm just going to keep distant. So we naturally, <laughs> Just we didn't talk for six months. That's so interesting that, that, that it's such a Rashomon sort of thing where you come at it from different perspectives and everyone has a different story. I think that's fascinating. Um, when you make a film like this, you're, you're constantly submerged in, in, in the torture and the misery and the anguish of, of the tragedy of slavery. But I'd imagine as a human being, it's important to make sure that you still feel those things. So when you're around it so much and you're deep in this world, what do you have to do, like not just as an artist, but as a human being to make sure that you never become numb to that or never become desensitized to it, I guess? That is a great question. How do we not become numb or desensitized? And in this time uh, of mass media, it's easy to become apathetic. It's easy to become desensitized. Uh, our job is, as as artists and, and and more more importantly as human beings is not is to fight apathy at every quarter and, and and allow our hearts to open and not just open to bleed out but to connect mm -hmm. uh, so the 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 gift of this film was was an investigatory opportunity to look at our country's bloody history and also recognize what the human spirit can do despite all odds. And this mm -hmm. ultimately is a hopeful film and an empowering film. It really is. Um, I walked away feeling much more hopeful and just than, than I really expected to walking in. Um, one of the, the most incredible things about um, how Antoine Fuqua shoots this film is that the environment plays such a big part. The swamp is sort of a character in this movie. And you have played amazing roles in very specific environments. I think of 310 to Yuma or Hell or High Water or Leave No Trace. As an actor, what does, I guess, like the environment around you give you that can add to the character? Uh, it, it, gosh, it, it, I suppose you feel different in your bedroom than you do in a ballroom. Mm -hmm. Uh, weather ha has a particular way of affecting you. So when you have 110 degree heat and humidity, you're going to feel a particular way. And, and uh, hopefully it's in line with the scene. And, and it was, it was, it served the story. So shooting in Louisiana uh, in, in the swamps. Uh, and I mean, swamps by when you go to work, the first thing you ask are how many gators did they get off the set? before we arrived and it's somewhere between 35 and 40. What? So that, that kind of uh, activates a mindset that you just say, okay, we are here right now. And that, that, that helps. Uh, of all the environments that you've had to deal with, is this the one that has been the biggest part of, of your acting experience? I mean, hearing that Gator story, I can't imagine any other experience like that coming close. Uh, yeah, alligators, uh, poisonous snakes, spiders, uh, those things that can kill you on a set, 
Uh, yeah, I'd say it was certainly one of the more um, physically demanding environments. Uh, but it, again, uh, that's supposed to be my home. So mm-hmm. g- get comfortable. Get comfy. I appreciate and that. Be, and be aware. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Always be aware. Um, you know, swinging back to your relationship with Will on set, uh, you know, I, whenever you, you accept that you have to on camera treat people poorly, like in the film, you literally treat uh, Will Smith's character like a dog in the film. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio famously was was hesitant to use the N-word in Django. Uh, did you still feel a, a hesitancy on set before you hear action? Or is it a situation where as an actor, if you're going to sign on for this film, those are sort of the things you sign on for? Antoine and I spoke uh, uh, about every level of violence, be it physical or or, or verbal, ver- mm-hmm. hate speech, mm-hmm. uh, and and physical violence, and, and making sure that it wasn't just to say the words. It wasn't just for brutality. It had to move story. Mm-hmm. It had to tell uh, the tale as honestly as possible. Uh, as a family of a uh, civil rights activists. Uh, th- th- that kind of language is not something I'm I'm comfortable with at all. So Antoine and I would talk about how do we use hate speech. We'd speak about it that way. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, in the same way that we wouldn't use the name of groups that are cropping up that uh, 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 are committing uh, abhorrent violence uh, racially and anti-Semitically right mm-hmm. now. We talk about the victims. Mm-hmm. We, we'd say their names, but we, we we don't need to say the names of the groups. We don't want to give them time. That's not what this film's about. This film is about the perseverance of humanity, the the the, the will for love. And I think that's why it's uh, I don't know. It's 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 tracking with with, with us so well. We were just talking in hospitality suite about how all of us walked out of that feeling um, feeling empowered. Um, I'm going to cut you loose on this. You you hear stories of actors carrying their characters with them, even after shooting raps. I'm curious if you're, you are an actor who does that. And in a situation like this, are you happy to get rid of someone like this? Are you happy to go home and sort of shed this guy off of you? I miss my babies, my kids, my mm-hmm. wife. Of course, these are basic fundamental things when you're away from your family. Uh, having these pictures in my mind every day, that there is a deprocessing uh, that, that, that has to happen. Uh, but what I will say is, to to return to your previous question about sensitivity, Mm -hmm. I too feel tenderized and more compassionate to our fellow human beings and more aware of where we've come from, where we're at, and and hoping that we can uh, correct ship. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Foster, I want to thank you for an incredible conversation. I just want to end by saying I've grown up with you as, as an actor and one of the coolest parts of my career is just seeing what a just absolutely phenomenal actor you have continued to evolve and grow into. So seriously, it's an honor to be able to speak with you, my friend. Thank you so much. I wish right, you good a to see you, buddy. Day. You too, man. Take care. We're going, we don't need roads.